I just wanted to uh, take a few minutes and answer a question by one of our uh, one of our viewers, Boss. And the Boss asks basically, you know, what's the geometrical factor for the dipole dipole array? And there there are a couple different ways to do this. Uh, and it just really depends on how you define the. We usually take the separation between the current electrodes and the potential electrodes is some multiple of the spacing between the current electrodes and the potential electrodes. So in this example we define n times a as the distance from the rightmost current electrode to the leftmost potential electrode. So that d1 is going to be equal to n plus 1a, so we have an additional a here, uh, D2 is just going to be equal to Na and so on. D3, we're going to go from A all the way over to N, so we've got Na plus 2, so N plus 2A, and, and so on. <clears throat> so this is our basic definition for the geometrical factor. We're just going to plug and chug, and uh, this just becomes an algebra problem, basically. Um, what we have here is substituting for D1, D2, D3, and D4. We've got 1 over N plus 1A minus 1 over NA minus 1 over N plus 2A plus 1 over N plus 1A to the minus 1 power. <clears throat> so taking this term, added it to this term, we get 2 over n plus 1a. Okay, and then we just have these other two terms. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to combine these two terms to get this term. So same common denominator. We have na squared times n plus 1. And then we have, when we combine terms, we get a numerator of a times n minus 1. And then we continue to combine terms under the same common denominator. Notice that in the denominator here we have n times a cubed times n plus 1 times n plus 2. <clears throat> so, more algebra. Uh, we ended up with this. We have a common factor here, a squared. We can get rid of the a squared in these two terms leaves us with an a in the denominator. So we have an na times an n plus 1 times an n plus 2. Go through the multiplications up here. Subtract common terms from each other. We end up with minus 2 times n times a times n plus 1 times n plus 2. And over here we end up with the geometrical factor minus pi times n times a times n plus 1 times n plus 2. And this yields a geometrical factor that uh, you'll see in some texts. Um, now, we often ignore this negative sign. Uh, it, it was important when we were dealing with the tripotential array configuration. The minus sign here is ignored, though. So all our readings are just taken as positive rather than negative. Now there's another way to set this up. We can define n, you know, as a multiple of a, we can define, uh, you know, this distance from this current electrode to this potential electrode would be n minus 1a. But defining it this way, we have d1 is basically take this line, which is the distance from the center of the current electrodes to the center of the potential electrodes, as na. D1, if we slide this line over, we basically have D1. And N minus 1, um, <clears throat> we're going from this electrode uh, now over to M, so that's N minus 1A, and so on for D3 and D4. Now, rather than go through, um, you know, all the, the messy algebra and, you know, use the basic definition for the geometrical factor. Let's just realize that we can, this n is basically n minus 1. So we're going to replace the n that we used previously with n minus 1. And that's going to give us pi a times 
n minus 1 times n minus 1 plus 1 is n times n minus 1 plus 2 is n plus 1. And you go through that multiplication and you get the geometrical factor pi a n times n, n squared minus 1. So this is also uh, a form of the geometrical factor that you'll run into in textbooks. So, so, so I hope that helped uh, Boss and anybody else that had that question. Um, so, you know, just coming back to the tripotential uh, system, we do have this negative sign over here where we have the two current electrodes to the left and the two potential electrodes to the right. Since for the dipole-dipole array, the current and potential electrodes are always to the left and right of each other, we just ignore this minus sign and interpret all of our potential differences as positive. So, next time we're going to talk about uh, the uh, two-layer resistivity response and um, we'll do some work in Excel. It'll be a little bit of an interactive work and we'll um, talk to you next time. Thanks for the question and thanks for